Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, bringing you the good times in music, fashion, pop culture, and entertainment. We got a really fun show for you guys today. Uh, we have two great guests. Our first guest is going to be Rhonda Swan. Uh, she does everything. She's an author, a businesswoman. She's a TV show host. She has the Unstoppable Branding Agency. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then we have Margarita Monet coming on, and she's the lead singer of Edge of Paradise, a really uh, popular like rock metal band. And uh, so I think it's going to be a great show. But before we get started, let's just say hi to everybody, starting off with my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. He's got a black eye. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> Although I think it's sexy because he looks like a Brooklyn wise guy with the black eye. Here's what happened. I have a magnificent sofa that I love and adore the frame. It was by a designer from Palm Springs, especially built to my specifications. And I don't want to get rid of it. I said, Jimmy, let's saran wrap it, you know, in that wrap stuff and put it in the garage. And one day we will have it recovered. If we move to a bigger house, I, I could use the extra sofa. Let's keep it because we bought another sofa. So we decide to wrap it in stretch wrap, which we did. And we put it on a dolly and we wheeled it into the garage. Now we can't get it into the against the wall because above our garage, we have metal racks where we keep Christmas stuff. So the sofa was taller than the rack. But there was one little area where we could get the sofa in. So Jimmy's pushing the sofa. The sofa snapped off the wall, hit him back in the face. And then it went back and crushed my hand. So... <laughs> <laughs> we both got like attacked by a sofa. By a sofa. So I said to Jimmy, you should throw the fucking thing out. I'm so sick of this sofa, but I love the sofa. He loves the sofa. Anyway, the sofa is in the garage in proper place, safe. It won't fall on the cars. But meanwhile, I have two hands now that don't work. This one doesn't work from the drill. Remember when it snapped my hand? And this one from the sofa. But poor Jimmy. They said I look badass. <laughs> well, you know, I have a joke that I do privately. I really shouldn't do it on air, but I will. Jim and I were having sex, and he said, beat me, beat me, so I did. <laughs> That's the joke. Eileen Shapiro was crying from it. She was laughing her head off. Anyway, when I told her. So that's the story about Jimmy's black eye. Look at it, too. It's, like, huge. But anyway, it's all good, everybody. Well, actually, he didn't get hit in the eye. He got hit on the, got the cheek, cheek, on the, on the cheek cheekbone. Somehow it, like, got red here because this is where it sores right. over here. But... And, it, and the bump is over here on it. The, the, the whole frame snapped right back and hit him in the face and then it went then he, i guess he pushed it against the wall where my fingers were <laughs> yeah when i pushed it his finger was behind the wall he was bleeding all over the garage oh it was a freaking <laughs> fiasco so i said to jimmy you know this sofa has a history now it has a story <clears throat> but really um if we could get people to do these things for us we'd be happy to hire them but there's a shortage of people in Palm Springs. Everybody is buying everything in Palm Springs, even broken down dumps, paying like a million dollars. And they're having them redone. New kitchens, new bathrooms. You can't things. find any help. So there's no help available. But I understand on Long Island is the same thing because my friend John Vecchio, that's his business. And he said that he just can't get enough workers to work with him on all the jobs that he has. It's, it's, it's all over the country, shortage on everything. Yeah, Astro, over here. Let's say hi to everybody in the chat room. Wait, wait, I'm not done yet. Oh, let me just say hi to the chat wait, room. No, 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 no. It's my minute, and you could do chat room. They're waiting. They're not going anywhere. Here is a wonderful T-shirt my daughters gave me for Father's Day. I, I you got to keep you talking. See. You have to sit Can up you higher. see it? So it says, Dear Dad... Dear Dad, I can't even read it. Let me get in the here. Dear Dad, we are awesome. Thank you, Deirdre, Daddy, and Leslie. Isn't that wonderful? But I don't want to wear it because I don't want it to smell of cologne. I'm going to have it framed. So we're going to cut it out and have it mounted and framed, and I'm going to hang it in the den. There you go. Because it's too precious to be worn. So chat room, what's up? B. Claudia has joined us from Germany. Mike Wagner from the Mike Wagner Show. Teresa Sabin is in Florida. Tristan is in Australia. Backpack John is in New York. Um, I don't know who else is in there because it's going by really fast. But um, we got a great show for you guys today. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to enjoy it. And we hope everybody's been having a good week. And yes yesterday, I think, was the first day of summer or Monday, one of these days recently. Well, here in Palm Springs, summer it's always summer. two months ago. It's hot <laughs> as hell. 
But I wanted to say to everybody out there, if you're a Jane Russell fan, go on my page, Ron Russell Show page on Facebook. I posted a bunch of pictures, private pictures, never seen before, of Jane and myself. And I got to tell you, they're getting hundreds and hundreds of views and likes, and everybody is so enjoying our private pictures together. They've never gone, these have never been public. These are our private pictures. But go on my uh Facebook page. Also, Stefan is in the chat room. I don't know if I said hi to Stefan or not, but what's up, everybody? So all is good. We're going to have some fun. Um, you know, actually... Stefan, I just friended you today. How come you weren't my friend on Facebook? I mean, I thought you were on it for years ago. I don't know. You know Facebook's weird. It keeps I don't people know. off. You know, you don't know who's on, who's off. I mean, Sue Wong is back on Facebook, everybody. Oh, yeah. Sue Wong's back, you guys. So Sue is back. Telling everybody how terrific life is and what to do and how to handle it and to beware of the vampires, the very evil uh, people who are negative, who suck up your energy and wish you bad. She's smart. She knows how to get rid of those creeps. Absolutely. So I got rid of a few a few months ago. You got to like love it. Um, look at my eye. It really looks bad on the TV. You know, maybe I should punch you in the other eye so you look like <laughs> yeah. Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> Heavy eye makeup. No, really. Can I punch you on the other side? Let me. Just, oh, yeah. you go, Stefan go. says it was deleted by accident. If he was, if you're not friends with him, because oh, he would never delete yeah, you. Yeah. Well, I put you back on. There you go. He put you back on. You know, so many people are waiting to come on, and I got to keep taking people off. The only people I remove are people that I've never heard from. They've been on there forever, and they don't like or come into anything that I do. So I think they just did it to fill up their page, so they have a higher number of friends. Those people I get rid of. I'm not interested in, in those. I'm not, I don't want to be your score, you know, uh, because my name on your page makes your page go up a digit. <laughs> well, you know, I have friends on Facebook, people that it, we interact. They like what I write, what I post, what I do. And I like what they write and what they post. And and it's wonderful. That's how Facebook should be. Stefan says unless, thank you. Unless the communists, you know, they edit it out. That's so funny. So. Um, so real quick, everybody, you can hear the Jimmy Star Show. We want to thank everybody for leaving all the comments on Apple Podcasts. Uh, we're trying to build up our presence on Apple Podcasts. Yes. So thank you very much. And uh, you can also hear the show on iHeartRadio. Uh, we're on Apple Podcasts. We're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. We're on Amazon Music. We're on YouTube. We're on Google Podcasts, Radio Public, TuneIn, Pandora, Amazon Prime. And SoundCloud, we're on a bunch of other things too, but those are the ones everybody knows. And All, if you know how to listen to native drums, you can hear our show in drums. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> you got to like love it. And for all of you who can't see Astro sitting in here between us, he's having a good time. So, where else would my baby sweetheart love be? Absolutely. So, Honey, I'm sorry you got that black eye. I am too, but look at you didn't break your nose. I'm kind of like looking good though. Yeah, but what if it broke your nose? That would have been something. You know, you got to be careful, folks, when you do things. Um, we were careful. Whoever expected it to snap like that, you know, to bounce off the wall and come back so quickly with such rapid thrust, you know, boom, boom. And we're not as strong as we used to be because <laughs> I got a really bad knee, so I have difficulty, like, walking, more or less moving anything around. And Ron's hands are already, like, like shot. damaged and shot, so he has trouble holding on to some things once in a while. <laughs> My, so my between doc, the two of us, my between doc, the two of us, we're like one person. <laughs> my doctor said it could take a year for my other, my right hand to heal from the, the the drill that snapped around and twisted my wrist and pinky. It could be a year. So I have a paralyzed pinky. I still don't feel my pinky. Oh, actually, I can move it, but it's all pins and needles. I don't feel it. Teresa Saban says the ricochet. Yeah, it was like a ricochet, and it was. and now uh. The fabulous and wonderful. But I'm waiting for rumors to go around that I beat Jimmy up because that's what's going to ultimately be. Oh, they're just saying that about the sofa. Ron really beats Jimmy up. Spousal abuse. Yeah, <clears throat> never. But in the meantime, we have. Um, uh, well, they say things. About Eileen just joined us. Eileen. Mm. Eileen just joined us in the chat room. You guys, Eileen's tuning in because we have some great guests today, and our first guest mm. is actually in the in the uh, green room. Eileen so is like a smoothie. Yes. Say hi to Eileen. Hey, Eileen. What's hi, up? Baby. We're going to see you next week, Angel Puss. And Sue Wong, 
is joining us at our restaurant for Chinese food and she keeps insisting on paying for it. I mean, what's her story? You know, I mean, she writes on Facebook and I'm paying for the whole world to know she's paying. Meanwhile, you think Soho and I are going to let her pay? It never <laughs> happened. Women don't pay at our table. You, we might let pay. We'll take it out and trade later. Oh, yeah, you know, right. steak and rape. <clears throat> Remember that? Years ago, women used to say that. I went on a date with a guy and it was steak and rape. He gave me steak and thought he you know could you rape can't me. can't say that shit anymore. Oh, come on. <laughs> Cut the crap. It's a joke. Get over it. I'm not, I don't belong to this world. I belong in the real world, not this crazy, stupid 30 year old, 20 year old moronic world. So we're going to, anyway, Eileen, Eileen, enjoy this show. Loosen your bra this way. You're not uncomfortable and enjoy this show. Just don't loosen your bra too much because they may come through my screen and hit me in the face. There you go. What's <laughs> up? All right. Go ahead. Let's one. Let's let our first guest in. Hi. Hi. Is it my Elizabeth Taylor? Look at her. She's so beautiful. How are you too? I we miss you. Too. We miss you too. You too. You're so hold on. Her. I gotta do an intro real quick. So, all right, everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. This lady does everything. Yep. She's an author. She is a a talk show host, the Rhonda Swan Show. She's the founder of the Unstoppable Branding Agency, one of the biggest branding agencies in the world. She's fabulous, she's wonderful, she's gorgeous. And we want to welcome you to the show. Thanks, guys. Good to see you. Yes. All from New York City. Yeah, and you're going to tell us about that in a minute. Yes. I know you already know, Ron, but I have to do it for everybody anyway. So let me introduce you to my cool, no, outrageous no, man me. about town co-host, co Ron we're Russell. Lo we're lovers already. What are you kidding? <laughs> I fell in love with her the minute I saw her. She's so beautiful. No, she really is beautiful. And that cover girl, that picture, my God. We're going to show that to everybody. Oh, my it. God, that picture of her. She could have been a movie star faster than any. Sophia Loren, move over. No, really. That picture of you on the cover of that magazine Hang on, we're gonna is show it. so we're gonna show fucking it. drop here. dead. Okay, so you guys, we went to an event Friday night. And it was in Bel Air. At yeah, a, hang on, at you, a you, you positioned the chairs wrong, Jim. We can't see her. She's bobbing over the top of my head. The chairs are supposed to be on an angle. Uh, no, no, you're fine. No, no, it's okay, honey. We're, we're fine. We're fine. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll just see yeah, I'll do that. Computer, there you are. I'll do that. Okay. So you guys, we went to an incredible party on Friday night, and yep, it was it was a book signing event for a book that Rhonda has done with a bunch <laughs> of talented women. And there we also had a magazine called Wild. And if you look, look at that face. That's Rhonda on the cover of the magazine. Oh my God, is she not gorgeous? Look at this fabulous. I mean, she's like so look fabulous. And you guys perfect. are going to learn why she's so fabulous in a minute. Is, her daughter is beautiful. The husband's not bad either. He's kind of cute. If you could see behind all that beard. But anyway, he's a cute looking guy. Yeah, those blue eyes, you know, he caught me in the water 24 years ago, so. Yeah, no, and he's a sweetie. He's a nice fellow. So wait, you guys, so this is Rhonda's 15-year-old daughter who's an entrepreneur. Gorgeous She's girl. also in the book, and she's gorgeous. Absolutely fabulous. Very but we're going to talk about it in one minute. First, we have to have Rhonda say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hi, everyone. Good to see you in the chat room. Yay. <laughs> um, all right, so we went to this fabulous event, you guys. It was a book, a book signing event, the name of the book is women gone wild the wealth edition the feminine guide to fearless living we both got it and there's um how, how many authors are in this 25 authors 25 authors oh, are in this i'm book. sorry i kept saying 21 25 authors and we're going to talk about this in a minute but before we talk about this let's talk a little bit about you tell us first of all you don't even live here you're on a book tour in the united states but you don't live here tell everybody a little bit about you yeah so i um well, i'm from detroit i was born and raised in detroit Moved to San Diego in 98, where I met the love of my life, Brian, surfing in the water in San Diego. Uh, we lived in San Diego for about 11 years, and now we have been on the road for the last 15 years traveling. We've lived in about 52 different countries. My daughter was one when we left at the time, and now we reside in Bali, Indonesia. Which is beautiful from what everybody says. Yeah. Now, you're Italian and Indian. Not American Indian, Hindu Indian. No, American Indian. Yeah, American. Oh, you're American. I thought you were Hindu. No, well, Bali is a Hindu uh, island. So Indonesia is Muslim. Bali itself is mainly right. Hindu island. But I thought you were Italian and Hindu. But you're no, Italian and Na Na Native American Native Indian. American. That's wow. That's an so interesting So now how did you decide on Bali, though? How did you decide this is the place we're going to, like, settle yeah. down? Well, after living in so many different countries, we my, because my family all serves, 
Bali's like our favorite place. I mean, it's such a tropical, beautiful island. You now it's it pretty much has everything that you want. You just ride your motorbikes in your heels, and you know you just live a lot more cruisy. So we chose to to, to settle down after eight years of being on the road with Hanalei, and she was one when we started to travel. And when we went to Bali the second time, we're like, okay, I think it's time to settle. It's very safe there. I mean, they don't have guns. You know, there's no crime. Great place to raise. She was a eight, family. 15, you know, so it's just a really good spot. And it's just, it's just beautiful. And it gets us away. I, I love being back to the States, but wow, being in LA, now New York, we were in Vegas first. It's like so much energy. And it's like, ah, you go back to Bali and you just, you calm down a bit. Okay. Yeah. Now a little bit, I know I started to read your book. <clears throat> but unfortunately, Jimmy got hit in the face with the sofa and me with the hand. He's got a black eye and I've got a fractured finger. Oh so <clears throat> I had, I think that's terrible. The, the story is true about putting the sofa in the garage and it hit him right in the face. But anyway, I started reading your book and I'm finding it extremely interesting. I know a lot about you and I'm going to discuss it because you're open. Yeah. You came from a very poor family in Michigan. Your mm -hmm. parents were in a 12 step program because they were dope addicts. You my came dad, from, not my mom. Your, my, your dad, and you came from a hard beginning and yeah. you went to college and you educated yourself and today you're a billionaire. Let's <laughs> say, make me rich. I want to be rich like you. What, <laughs> what should I do? Tell everybody out there how to be rich. <laughs> yeah. Go to the unstoppable well, branding agency. Yeah, exactly. and hire her. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's so funny though. I love when you say this, Ron, because it's like when we actually look at what does it take to be not only just wealthy, because the, the book itself, this is the wealth edition of our book. So we launched the first first Women Gone Wild last year. It did really well. And there's a whole reason behind why I wanted to to help this book come to life. But now we're in the wild series, and W is for wealth. I is for intuition, L is for leadership, and D is for diversity. It's like a whole wild woman. And when we talk about wealth, it's like, how do I become wealthy? And I think what it comes down to is people asking themselves a different question. What does wealth mean for them? You know, like wealth for me meant money years ago. Like I wanted to go corporate. I wanted to make all this money, own a big company. And what I found though is there's a lot of shallow thinking that happens when people become wealthy and they don't actually have a real purpose or a reason behind they, why they want wealth. And so I always say to people, ask yourself, what does it mean to you? You know, like in this book, my daughter talks about, you know, the wealth. I mean, she started her first company when she was 11, made six figures when she was 12. Now she could say, wow, I got money. I got wealth. However, her chapter is about the memories that she's been able to create. And I think it's asking ourselves, what does it really mean to be wealthy? Because society and the way we're, we're brought up in this world is, you know, it's like you have to have the things to be seen or to be wealthy. And I actually don't believe that anymore. Uh, however, I did believe it back in the day. What about, what about the comforts of money? And I believe that wealth, my wealth is health because I'm 82 yeah, years absolutely. old. So I could have billions of dollars, but if I'm not in good health, I'm worth That's shit. It. Right? So, you know, it's all about health and wealth, mental health. Um, I like money because it's comfortable. Other than that, I'm not interested in money. Jimmy knows that. I don't even know how much money we have. Tell you the right, Jim? Yeah, he never knows. I have knows. no I idea. Everything. I haven't actually looked at our bank account. This is no joke. Probably 12 years. I have not looked at our bank account yeah. once. I tell my husband, green light, red light, and that's it. Because you're right. It's, it's not the number. It's really how you feel about it. However, I'm not opposed to having, making, and having enough money and resources so I can help and contribute, right? And I think that's where some people get twisted. You know, once you realize like what, what money can do and what you can do with it, you know, then we can do a lot of amazing things, you know? But I think it's those that get twisted up that money be, drives them and becomes who they are. Um, and yeah, but I don't, I don't like people who have money who use it to hurt people who don't that's have money. Don't it. flaunt it. Don't, right. you know, like, like, in other words, you could come from a small hick town somewhere in America and then become multi-rich and then go back to your hick town and show sure. off and hurt people. That's right. when money turns on you and you, yeah. you will be ill and never enjoy it because they say all the money you have, spend it on doctors. You've heard that. Yeah. So I want to wait. I want to go over this a little bit. I so, love you. So you know. first of all, you guys. No, I do. So, I really do. So Rhonda, where? First of all, tell people because we'll tell them a couple times. Where can they actually get this book? Get, get yeah, this book. It's right now. So this the, the the physical book that we're holding. This is the limited edition. This is only for family and friends. It doesn't physically come out until uh, September. 
But right now it's on Amazon. We hit 15 top best selling categories within 24 hours. We've been ranking in the top two and 3,000 of all time books over these last three weeks. So you can go to wgwlive.com, takes you right to Amazon. And we're keeping the digital book right now open for only $2, $1.99 this whole oh. week until the tour is over wow. um, so that everyone get their hands on it and they can share it and give it as gifts and all that fun stuff. You so you guys, wait a minute, two bucks. You can't even buy bubble gum for two bucks anymore. <laughs> you, can, you can get this book for two bucks. You gotta be kidding. So hang on. Let me just That's read. Fabulous. I just read this water for 10 bucks yesterday. Here. I mean, really? I know. Yeah. Really, really, really and truly. So you guys, the, the, again, you guys, the book is called Women Go Wild, The Wealth Edition, The Feminine Guide to Fearless Women. There's 25 female authors, and I want to mention them and, and, and just read the back of the book real quick. It says, you are not alone. This book is filled with women who have not only contributed to the new definition of wealth, but have also helped others have a more abundant life full of significance. These healers, mothers, thought leaders, and change makers have freed themselves from the perceived value of men and learned to live their life on their own terms with, with uh, their own purpose, with own, with on purpose, purpose, prosperity. Sorry, everybody tongue twisted in this book. You will discover new definitions of wealth, timely views on prosperity, lucrative ways to live, empowering ways to play wild ways to wealth with less work. Um, and so we went to this fabulous book signing up wait, in Bel Air. Wait, wait, I'm say, not no, I, before you go there, I want to go here. People, folks, because a woman doesn't want a man and get married, doesn't make her a lesbian. That's true. Okay. <laughs> I want everybody out there to know that there are plenty of straight women who really be, who really have had it with men because men can be childish, stupid, cheating. You know, men men are not exactly the best specimens of human. And I'm a man and I know what I'm talking about. Um, so I think she cornered this. My favorite one is my Irish lady. I loved her at your Karen party. Karen Whelan, right? That's and Karen the witch. Whelan. I love the witch. I know her from a lot of stuff, so I'm old pals with the witch. Oh, no, and the witch wasn't one of her authors. Oh, I wish. Was... <laughs> no, the witch wasn't one of the oh, authors. I, I told my daughter, Deirdre, <laughs> that there's a, a witch is in the book. I thought she was. No, 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 no. There's no witch isn't one of the authors. Hang on, you guys. So Ra so we went to this great event. Rhonda was there. She, there's 25 authors. Her daughter, Hannah Lai or Hannah Lai? Hannah Lay, Swan, um, Diane Von Wellinets, Wentworth, uh, Dana Kay, Stephanie Bruins was there too, right? That fabulous woman from Germany. I loved her from Germany. Kimberly Gill Martin, Karen Whelan, who we're actually bringing on the show to tell her story. Yeah. Courtney Murray, Shar Moore, Taryn Reeves. I don't know how. how oh, uh, Blair Kaplan Venables was at the party. She's fabulous. She's I fabulous, loved her to death. Right? <laughs> um, Adriana Monique Alvarez, Ebony Swank, Barbie Layton. April Ryan, uh, Mikhail Gabriel, or is that how you pronounce it? Mikhail Gabriel, Michelle. Uh, Gabriel. Uh, Michelle. Michelle okay, they he doesn't it, read well. They He's spell illiterate. it different. No, they no, spell it right. different. <laughs> she spells they, it. They don't educate Ania, well in Florida. Ania Halama, Michelle Beltran, Genevieve Searle, Danelle Delgado, Robin Mullen, and Isabel Fagan. You guys, and so many of the people we actually met, and they're in, a lot of them are in New York right now, and they had a billboard in Times Square yesterday, oh my, right? Seriously. Jimmy, I could probably lift you up. I'm in my hotel room. Here goes this. Look, I'm gonna take you. Look, right here for my room. <laughs> oh, there it is, there right it there. Is. There it is. Holy smoke! You're making Holy me. It's, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I'm I'm born and raised in New York. You're making me homesick. Oh, no, I miss my, my city. Oh I yes, mean. there's your daughter, which I want to tell you too. I think that all the things that you did, your daughter was so well behaved and literally your daughter could be like a supermodel. She's so oh. beautiful. And adult, well spoken and sophisticated, yeah. a very intelligent girl. Now I want to apologize to your assistant Nell. Nell Nellica. Nellica. I call her Nell. <laughs> She loves you, by the way. She's here. You know, she Hi, came... Nellica. <laughs> Nell, <laughs> Nell, Nell, ah, oh, my God. We love you. Now, Nell is a very beautiful girl with a nice... <laughs> oh, this is a funny story. I know what you're going to say. With a nice rack, and she's in a very lovely black dress with a slit with a little bit of knee hanging out. And as you go down the face, you're pleased. You go down the body, you're enchanted. And then you go down the leg, and you want to lick. And then you look at the feet. Fucking boots. <laughs> She had on combat boots with a gown. <laughs> she was working it. And I said oh, to her, on. get those boots off and put on Joan Crawford fuck me pumps because <laughs> you're so sexy. <laughs> you got to wear high heels. And, and then I look at some people in gowns with these boots. Now, I want to say something. Oh, 
in Russia years ago, we used to make fun of the Russian women because we would see them in dresses with boots and babachkas on their heads. So now we are becoming what? Communists? We're becoming Russian. We're wearing boots with gowns. I don't get it. Nell is a sweetie pie. I felt an instant friend with her, Nell. You're a cutie pie and a sweetie pie and a damn nice girl. And Rhonda, lucky you both have each other. I'm sure, she, I'm sure she's great to work with. I could do nothing without this woman. It's no, no I, I go to many, many, I go to many, many parties with many, many celebrities, and I never have a good time. Well, sometimes I do. But at your party, I just found some of the nicest people. Uh, I didn't like the house. Eight million dollars is an ugly house. <laughs> oh, I hate that house. It's no warmth, no charm, not a, not a bit of no gold leaf, no carving, nothing. It was so mad. Wait a second, when you guys were the there, the view is gorgeous. When you guys were there, oh, the, the view, view is breathtaking. Magnificent. But wait a minute. She doesn't own this house. It's no. for sale for eight the million. The Nightfall Group kind of sponsored us to be there. Right. So. But wait, it's seventy five thousand dollars a month to rent. They yeah, we googled it. Out of their fucking heads. <laughs> I know, right? Get out of seventy five thousand like bucks a month. I so could buy, I could wait buy a second, a car though. With that. Wait a second. Did you guys see the house above you? Yeah. Yeah. The, it's the called one. the one. The one. Yeah. Okay. So we saw a documentary on that, and it cost five hundred million dollars to make that house. It's, it's the, the biggest house in the most world. Most expensive house in the world. <laughs> well, two doors, two doors, two doors down from where the party was held, Jennifer Aniston lives. Yeah. So now you know the neighborhood. It's Bel Air, very exquisite. But then again, Rhonda does everything big style because Rhonda is big style. She had on a stunning dress. Everybody out there. Well, who did you dress? All that beadwork and stuff. <sighs> Jay Suisse, Jay Suisse Flirt is a designer in Indonesia, in Bali. They're very good friends of ours, Fabiola and Inda. Inda Kalala, Inda yeah. Kalala, they're, she, they're very famous in Indonesia, and she had made that dress for The them. detail work on this dress was absolutely beautiful. beautiful. And you look beautiful. And the first thing I said when I saw it was, oh, my God, I knew Elizabeth Taylor. I did, really and truly. I worked with Elizabeth. I, I embody her spirit. No, and the first thing I screamed at at Rhonda was, oh, my God, Elizabeth Taylor's eyes were not lavender, like everybody says. They were kind of a watery powder blue with a little gray in them. And Rhonda has the exact eyes of Elizabeth Taylor. And the way she makes them up with the black rings, she looks like Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> so the first thing I yelled out was, oh, my God, you look like Elizabeth Taylor, which is probably one of like the greatest the compliments. Greatest compliment woman. I've ever gotten. I was like, you just made my whole night. So no, I but I, I knew Elizabeth, I knew Elizabeth in, in, of course, in her later years, not when she was young, but you're a young Elizabeth. Oh, amazing. Right now? You're so cute. Yeah. I, Nell, you were supposed to come to Palm Springs. What happened? Liar. Um, it's next week, sweetie. When? Next, next week. Next week. Next week she's coming. What is she saying? Next, next week. Don't she's from know. Indonesia. <laughs> this is her New Zealand. She's from New Zealand. Oh, I thought she was Jewish from the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys also at this party, like she had the best entertainment, and if all you You're guys, Indonesian, if, Neil? No, no? She, no, no, she's from she's from New Zealand. No, New Zealand. I'm confused. That's like Australia, listen, but you, she lives in Indonesia. Listen, if you leave France and Italy, I'm lost. <laughs> You so you guys, this. you guys, they had Stefano uh, performing at, yeah. at Rhonda's amazing yes. event. Stefano was like came in seventh place on season seven of yeah. American Idol. He's a great guy. Uh, we followed each other in social media for years, so I was so excited to actually meet him um, there. And all so everybody dynamic. at the party, everybody at the party was amazing. Like all your friends, your friend who's the wealth manager lady was cool. I Hurry. forgot her name, but she was cool as could be. Everybody was really great. The view was great. Give a shout out to to James Clark uh, who helped. Help and the chip and together, the we love James. Dance a guy who was TV. nice with his wife. They were a sweet couple. And then the other couple, AJ like, and Tanya, and the other ones that were going to get married. They're together for six years. So I said to him, "Listen, if you don't put a ring on her finger in three months, I looked at her. I said, broke. dump him." And she said, "I'm so happy, Ron. You said that in front of him." <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. She's a beautiful girl. She doesn't Feel need to be tied up for six years. Either shit or get off the pot. Yeah, exactly. All right, yes. Nelly, she's behind like, the scenes to make sure our set looks you. good. Her That's fine. Dennis, You're good. Okay, so Dennis are hanging out. So uh, before we talk more, more wait, a little bit about what question. you do, wait, wait I want to ask a question. No, no, I got to ask you a question. What do you do when men hit on you? What do I do when men hit on you? I don't know what to do. I've been married for 24 years. 
I get I get bashful, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, like I can always handle the conversation. Then I'm like, but I always sudden start getting nervous. Look, I know. She, Jane, she Jane, could like walk in and wait. do like a five hundred million no. dollar deal, but a guy talking wait. to her. I, I, wait, I asked. Here's the, answer, here's the answer. My best friend was Jane Russell, the movie legend, and I asked Jane that question one night at dinner. I said, Jane, what do you say when men hit on you? And she looked at me. She said, "You should be so lucky," <laughs> and she walks away. <laughs> well, maybe I'll have to learn a bit. <laughs> So that's a good answer. You should be so lucky. <laughs> I like love it. So so real quick, before we talk more about the book, I so so does, have you ever heard of Stuart Surfboards? That's your husband because your husband's a big surfer and it used to be really big in California because that's my uncle is Stuart Surfboards. And he right? used to he used to like like Christian Fletcher and all the different people yeah. like surfed for him back in the day. I mean, I haven't seen him in like a zillion years. So but I think that your husband was the cool is like the coolest, like cool guy ever and he did a commercial while we were there for unstoppable beard something uh, yeah. like stuff to maintain a beard which yeah, exactly. which is a cool thing yeah but like set the scene though so here we are the, the the event's getting ready to start everyone's all fancy and i look out the window and i see brian like he's just a straight up dude surfer no shoes on he's got his shorts on and a t-shirt and he's calling people out for his commercial i'm like Oh, oh my, it was so much fun, though. It was so much fun. And you know what? Beard products are good. Beard products are hard to find in the first place. Some I know I have one. some guys. No lie. Their beards smell. You oh, know, you. no men hug. We, you know, in Hollywood, we all hug each other. And there's a couple of guys that I want to tell them, put a deodorant in your beard because it smells of lobster or clams or spaghetti or <laughs> Chinese food or, or I don't know what. But so beards. Gross. That's you know, why he created it. Cause I love the beard. I think it's super sexy. I love it. But you know, he was like, okay, you know, just, I wanted it always pointy and looking really good. It's a long like, beard. Yeah. It go, comes points out. So he's like, I'm just going to make my own products. Yeah. And they're all made in volume. They're all organic, like sandalwood and like really handsome, sexy smells. So, you know, now we don't have to have the lobster smell. I, I want to know something. This is not in your book. It might be if I read on, what gave you the idea to do and become who you are? I mean, where'd you fan where'd you get it from? Did you think it was not possible, a dream, a, a hopeless cause? Like, what was it all about? Yeah, well, I, you had mentioned this earlier. So I, when I was born, I was born in Detroit. Actually, my name was Jim Morrison when I was born. Did have a name for five days. Like, I really wish they would have kept my name to be Jim Morrison. That would have been amazing. <laughs> I think I really do embody Jim Morrison. Uh, but, I, you know, I was... I was born in Detroit. My dad was a drug addict and my mom was 20. And so, you know, my mom's amazing. However, they just weren't, they were so young and not really fit to raise, you know, child. And so my mom divorced my dad when I was three, thank goodness. He's still wild. He's at large wildness. And what happened for me, and I didn't realize it really, Ron, until the last several years. I mean, I just turned 49. And the last several years, especially after Hanale was born, I said, you know, I want to, you know, I don't want her to grow up with the kind of trauma that I had. And so growing up, I thought I needed to be perfect. I was a professional bodybuilder. I had like the best grades. I was a professional athlete. I played for the women's U.S. team from very, very young. All. Well, I need to interrupt what you. Team? Wait, Wait, no, I need what to, team? I'm sorry. I need to interrupt you. You had an yeah. eating disorder. Put that in the middle of what you're talking about. We have a yeah. lot of people out there yeah. who have eating disorders and yeah. need to hear what you have yeah. to say. Yeah, for sure. And growing up thinking that I had to be perfect, I, you know, I was six percent body fat. Like I was right. However, it had this the you know, this image that in order for people to love me or to be seen, I had to be perfect. So I was always trying to get family or my parents to see me. So instead of, you know, going the 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 negative way and going into drugs, which some people choose, I went this perfection way. And as I grew up, I was starting to realize that I was always trying to make people happy. Everything I was doing was to make others happy. And so, you know, I wanted to keep this perfect body and I didn't know how to do it. I mean, you go from your you know teens to your 20s, then into your 30s, and you can't keep 6% body fat. It's just not possible. And so I had all of these identity issues. Like, you know, I, and I had bulimia for like over 10 years. Didn't wow. know it was actually a thing. Like, no, it was a bad thing. You know, until I started to, it dawned on me, like, wait, I'm self-sabotaging myself. And I started to unpack a lot of stuff. And I talked about this in Vegas. I um, sat last year for over 100 hours in front of a fire, no food or water with a shaman. 
and start to unpack in this Pandora's box that most of us don't open. And I didn't even know I had such a history, right? With the trauma from my dad and the things that happened. I mean, he used to steal stuff and put it in my baby carriage and then have my mom walk out the store and she would get oh, wow. taken to jail. And, you know, I've sat in some jail cells with my dad because I was with him and he got picked up. You know, seven, I was seven years old and it was Thanksgiving. I was jumping up and down because it was snowing in Detroit. And his dog, which was a great Dane St. Bernard, bit my whole face. And you, I don't know if you noticed, but I have this scar here and here. And literally as a seven-year-old, my whole face was ripped off. You're so beautiful. And, I don't notice anything but your beauty. Well, thank goodness my face stretched nicely. And <laughs> I've, I've hidden the scars. But, you know, he, what he did is he got up because he had been partying all night. And he took me to a bar, the old timers bar first. So someone could drive me to the hospital because oh he was too wasted and he didn't want to get himself in trouble. And so all these things that had been happening to me, I just kind of pushed them away and just drove, right? Like, I'm not going to let this get to me. And as I started to unpack this stuff, I realized like, damn it, like there's stuff that happens to us in our life that we actually have to address or look at because it could be causing you to be and do things or wear identities that are really not yours. Yes. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, that, that, that was what drove you. Yeah. Yeah. That was my driver. And then my daughter, after my daughter being born, I said, you know what? And I learned about this and it was seemed very foreign, but I was, the shaman said, we can hold seven generations of trauma from our families of, of trauma in, in our bodies. We hold that trauma. So I, my daughter, Hanalei, to be completely sovereign, like be on her own, not having his bullshit. I have to peel the onion unless she created the onion layers, right? Right. right. And so I started to unpack that and I realized like, wow, all these things that I had been doing were really to make other people see me. And so when I actually started to take control and say, no, I'm doing this for me. Like I now have this rule, unless it gives me joy, leaves an impact or creates long-term financial structure and future for my family, I say no, like 100% no, you know? And so although I had been successful, I was pretty shallow in so many ways for many, many years and not knowing that. I mean, I've always been bubbly, a good person, but I was doing things for the wrong reasons instead of really doing them for myself and for my family, you know? So my wait, success was a driver. Wait, hang on, what were the reasons? You mentioned you were doing the wrong reasons. Tell us what the yeah, reasons well, were. Well, first off, I thought by having more money made me, uh, you know, seen more by being more popular, or more successful, or that people would like me more, right? The more money I had, the more success I would have. And I tell you, we had a really big crash in 08, 07. I think many had the same in California, we lived in La Jolla, a <laughs> beautiful house at the top of the hill. You know, we our, our jacuzzi overlooked Mexico in downtown. It was gorgeous. And we had invested in a lot of real estate. We put our name on $26 million homes and the developer took all the money from the construction loan because I signed our names so he could build them because I was pregnant and he robbed us clean. And so, yeah, 30 days before my daughter was born, about actually a little bit more because she was born 33 days early because I was so stressed, we found out we were losing it all. And here I'm standing in this big, huge house, two Mercedes, right? La Jolla, all this stuff. I'm like, what are we going to do? Like I have now this, this she, my daughter was born 33 days early. I'm holding her. I'm like, what am I going to be for this child? And the message came through that the money in your bank account does not make you or the parent for this daughter or for this little girl. And you now need to really stand up for like now who you are. It's not about the money anymore, right? Now it's like who you are. I mean, we had so many friends that we still don't talk to because we lost all the money. We fire sailed everything. We literally put stuff on our front yard and talking about being in La Jolla, yard sales, <laughs> not so <sexy. laughs> No, my sister lives in La Jolla, I know. <laughs> you know? Yeah, not the most sexiest thing to do, but we just left no. our ego at the door and we're like, you know what, we got to get out of this because our, our mind was really effed up. You know, I mean, new baby, all this stuff, all these identities, like, what are people going to think about us? You know, what are they going to say? And so we just said, you know what, we're getting rid of it all. So we left, we left in 2008, November 25th with $12,872.62 to our name and a vision and a vow, never put Hanalei in daycare and just to be the, the best humans we possibly could be. And now it's been 15 years later, you know, so these things start to unwind and you realize like, wow, all that stuff 
that you had or that you thought you needed to be doesn't matter. You know, well, I've I learned, love that, I've learned one thing. Uh, money and fame brings friends, but not necessarily real friends. People who like to hang on to your coattails because yeah. they could say, well, so-and-so is my friend or I know so-and-so or he was at, or she was at my party. You become a commodity yep. or an object. You're no longer a person. So when you lose your fame and money, people say, him? I don't want to. He's nobody. He's over. He was yesterday. He's forgotten. That's how cruel people yeah. can be. And I think you experience that. And you find out who your real friends are. You know, like you got to meet totally. Them, right? right? Okay. I would never. I would never have left you. Aww. I would have said, "You and your husband and daughter come live in my house. I'll make your pasta. We'll feel good. <laughs> we'll be happy." Wait, she I've said, done that. Uh, so I've we done met that Laura. With, yes. No, I have done. Lori. So I have. My friend have, Lori have, that we met. She was our neighbor, the blonde. So we call each other the booby twins because here she's like six two, right? Big boobs. And I was five two and I was brown haired, you know, she's blonde, and I had the boobs. I just has recently had them removed. Um, and we were the booby twins, you know. It's like she's the one that stayed with me no matter what happened, right? Very wealthy woman. She manages a you know, high net worth and high wealth um people. And it's like you really realize who are your friends, you know, and we had to get clear. We had to let clean a lot of people out. And now we know that's why our party was so amazing because we're only affecting high frequency people that just want to do good, you know? And so that's now the energy that we're attracting into our life after peeling well, off the layers. I, I believe in one, there's an old saying, birds of a feather flock together. Yeah. And I certainly believe that. My grandmother, little old Italian lady, couldn't even speak English, used to say to me, Rolando, that's my name is Rolando. When you grow up and get married, if you buy your wife a mink coat, make sure all of her friends have a mink coat first. <laughs> Otherwise, se do la occhio malo, the evil eye. Otherwise, they give you the evil eye. Yeah. And it's true. Yeah. People will be envious of, of, of beauty, wealth, fame, and they will wish you bad. They will do everything they can to make you unhappy. They try to bring you down to their level of misery because they're failures, they have never made it. And they will sometimes turn around and say, oh, well, he had a lot of luck. Bullshit, luck has nothing to do with it. You make your luck. Look yeah. at you, where you came from, what you what you were all about and who you are. I love you for that. I, I'm oh. so proud of you. And I don't give a shit if you, if you ever got poor, you come and live with me. I've taken in people in. No, I've had friends of mine live with me over the He's years. Like, I, don't know, I know. I oh, I don't. No. I, I'm. I, 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 no, I I'm not. I'm, like not I'm not kidding. You I don't either. like people because they're rich. Yeah, I mean, yeah. exactly. Rich or poor if I, make if I met you on a bread line, I would just talk and be your friend. I really would. You know, yeah. I like. I take people for who they are, not what they've got, yeah. because it doesn't affect me anymore. I've been around it for so many. You know, sixty-four years. I'm in show business, yeah. so I've been around movie stars, wealth, big shots, fancy Rolls Royce, bullshit, bullshit. Jaja Gabor. And we've been around shit too. You know, I mean, <laughs> I I've been around Jaja Gabor a lot, and when you're around that old wit, crazy lady, you know, Jaja was a camp. But um, wait, I want to say something because I, but, I, wait a I, minute, I I just want to finish. I write about yeah, it and this. I say about it. I love when I go home to Long Island mm. because I'm with normal people who talk yeah. about their children, their homes, their vacations, and I find it so refreshing. It's not about, well, my movie and I just finished and I'm doing another movie and then, you know, I just won an Oscar. I'm just famous. But Oh, what the hell gives a shit about your resume? <laughs> you you know those people. I want to I want to bring up, because I think that, you know, one of your... Well, I think you have a lot of phenomenal attributes, but I think the fact that you decided that your child comes first, because I don't believe oh, yeah. in today's society people do that. Ron did that. You know, he, he sacrificed a career to raise two daughters. Um, That's right. I had a lot and, of offers uh, on television, and I said, I'm sorry. Turned I turned them all down. I, well, I can't. I was living in Long Island, and I said, I can't go to. I, I was offered a big role that I really wanted in a very big movie, and it was a good role. And my pal, Lee Winkler, got it for me with a lot of work. And I had to turn it down because I didn't have the time to fly to, New to L.A. to film it and leave my children with who? Their mother didn't want them. She left, uh, and we never saw her for 35 years until she died. My children grew up without a mother. I was their mother and father. So 
I know what it's like. It's not easy. But he did what you did. <clears throat> yeah. And 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 I think that that is so honorable and but, I, but wait a minute. I, I don't. My children watch my show, and I don't want them ever to think I sacrificed my yeah. career. I never sacrificed anything. No, but yeah, you're the children minute. first. Oh, yeah. The joy, the joy of being with my children, New Year's. And when my daughter was first runner up in Miss America and the other one was a, was an artist. And in in I mean, I have wonderful daughters that beats any movie I could have been in. Believe right. me. Yeah. And just to see them shine. And that's the thing. My daughter, Hanalei, we are such a connected and close family. You know, when we left here, we went from having, you know, all the stuff to just three of us, you know, in Mexico. Sometimes it was just little hotel room, but we were oceanfront. We got to surf. We got to play in the beach. And we were just became such a close family. We're still, we're so very, very close. She I, know, I see, could see that. You know? My daughters call us the Three Musketeers. Deirdre, Leslie, and myself are the Three yeah. Musketeers. Of course, they love their stepdad, Jimmy, but he's still an outsider. <laughs> he's not in the Three Musketeers. Sorry, Jim. That's okay. So uh, let's talk a little bit. So you have a uh, you have a really big an agency. It's called the Unstoppable Branding Agency. It's unstoppablebrandingagency.com. Your impress your your website is super impressive. Just tell everybody a little bit about what it is and what you do. Yeah. So we um, we focus mainly on entrepreneurs, and what we do is we help them go from best kept secrets to world renowned brand. And what happened is because this is exactly what happened for me. I became an entrepreneur and I was just serving everyone else. But when I wanted people to, you know, Google came about, right? This is before social media when I started my company. And so I was learning to like for people to be able to find me and how are they finding you? They Google us. So what we did is I started helping people really develop their brand, their brand image, their message, their strategy online so they could be found. But what happens with entrepreneurs, we always end up serving everyone else than ourselves. And we don't put ourselves first. So like now we've got podcasts, we got things that we can be in front and tell our story. But we didn't really have that. And so I found a big problem. And the, the problem was that people now, especially entrepreneurs, they were, if you're going to look for them, unless their company has done something big and someone's party's talking about them, you didn't really know about them. And they might have a website or they might have their social media channels. So what we need to do is take, um, our, our PR that I love to do, which is digital print or I'm sorry, digital, um, magazine, um, publications and start telling the story because when they Google you and it's you talking about your, like being in Tom square, the weirdo going, Hey, check me out. I'm so great. Right. Everyone knows it. But if someone else, let's say even next to you is going, wow, this person, like what you're doing for me right now, this person knows what they're talking about. That's the third party credit credibility that makes someone say yes. So what we did is we took PR and started merging what I know in digital marketing. I was one of the very first uh, women in digital marketing to earn a million dollars online. Uh, and, you know, they call them sales funnels now. We didn't know what they were back then. And now we take, we tell people stories, we put them in tier one and tier two publications. But we do, we give them what they want, which is the vanity side, right? They can be in the big time, you know, publications. And then what we do is what they need, which is Google indexing their name, you know, so people can search and find them, getting them Google knowledge, all the stuff that Google represents as being credible that we do for our clients. And so they go then from not just being the entrepreneur that serves people, but being the entrepreneur that people know they like, and they trust them. And then of course they choose to say yes. I like love so it. in short, you build their businesses, That's it. we build their brand mm -hmm. yeah. That's and you, and you get it out to the, to the consumer. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds easy. I'm going to do it tomorrow. How fast before I'm a billionaire? <laughs> Let's start. Can I, can, I be a, can, I, wait, can I be a billionaire by October? Because we're going to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> you better hurry up. <laughs> and, I'd like, <laughs> and I'd like to be a billionaire when I go to Italy. No, so right? basically that that's how kind of like how this book came apart yeah. around yeah. then, right? Because yeah. a lot of the people that you work with uh, are in this book. That's right. And the, so the book actually came. So my mothership is my agency. That's the company it runs on its own. We do our thing. And, but three years ago, right before the pandemic actually hit, I was sitting in Bali at one of my events. I host a branding event and I was do, building these women's brands, right? And we're doing photo shoots and films. And we sat there and there's like 12 ladies sitting there. And I said, isn't it crazy that there's not more high net worth women sitting and sharing stories or sharing best practices you know, and we said, why don't we just write a book about it? Because it's, you know, I, I'm a recovering control freak bitch 
you know, business. <laughs> You're not a bitch. Well, I used to be. I did. Oh. I was, it, was, well, it was like knocking people down to get to the top, right? That's what we were told to do in corporate, especially, right? You know, in order for you to get the seat at the table with the men, you better be a ball buster. You better know what you're talking about. So that's who I became. Like I was on it and I got my seat at the table. However, it was pretty cold because I was with a bunch of dudes. You know, I was listening to a bunch of slurs, you know, sexual slurs and, you know, taking it like a man, just like whatever, blowing it off. I'm like, this isn't right. Like, why the hell is this happening? And why aren't more women finding their seat at the table? And so we were sitting at that table, all women. I said, why don't we just write a book? And so that's how it started. And we launched the first book. And now these women in the wealth book, most of them are my clients. I do their PR. I help them develop their business. They, you know, they grow their online brand credibility. We call it the Google footprint. And I said, ladies, you all deserve to be in this book to tell your story because all of them have gained so much in wealth uh, in their life. And yeah, so I do the, the book. It's not just being in the book. Like I do all the PR. We do you know, over six, eight months of PR, they're in tier one, tier two publications. They get interviewed on my show, which is getting about a million views per episode these days. We're getting a lot of, you know, attention. We, you know, put, put them on a Times Square billboard. You know, they get interviewed on different shows like this. Jimmy, when they interview on my show, there's a lot of publications that we work together on, you know, getting their story told. And so when we do all of this work now, when someone Googles me, it's like pfft, everywhere. And I want that to happen for my clients because they're not doing the work for themselves. And most PR agencies are more like, oh, let me get you at an event or let me get you in right. front of people. We do it completely opposite. We're all about the digital marketing and the identity. Footprint. Now, Which is where you need to Jimmy, be. Jimmy did this with our show without even knowing he was doing it because we have over 5 million viewers a week and we just made 1 billion downloads. What? Okay. Hey. And, we've been, and we've been Emmy nominated. So Jimmy, without ever knowing what he was doing, promoted and and worked on and got it out there i mean jimmy's a wonderful pr person i actually have to give some credit to though because um uh like i have a website jimmy stars world and it's number 40 40 number 40 of the top entertainment sites in the world and i have a partner who helps me do seo stuff uh, his name is stefan bell he's in the chat room and so a lot of the fact and of course eileen him, shapiro is wonderful they're a great team but I, I have 500 I, I, I have 500 million google search results so yeah eileen is eileen <laughs> eileen is new york jimmy's hollywood oh we love eileen I, yeah and you can't beat the two i mean they're, no. they're just they're an unbeatable well, team when we first met jimmy and eileen like it was like I just felt like instantly kindred spirits and souls, you know, and the, the fact that we got to meet you for the in person. Oh my God, it was so much fun. I was like so excited. <laughs> well, I, lo I loved when, we, you know, we walked into this house and there's a big staircase going down to the living room. And as we started to ascend the staircase, I hear, oh my God, there's Jimmy Starr. <laughs> and there's Rhonda yelling out Jimmy Starr's name. And I thought, wow, how, how wonderful is that? That's better than Norma Desmond walking down the steps <laughs> In her, in her movie. <laughs> so, uh, so, okay. So then you also, okay. You have the unstoppable branding agency. You're an author. You also have a show, the Rhonda Swan show, and you interview all kinds of entrepreneurs and you're also interviewing celebrities because Kevin Sorbo, I know is on the show yes. and you're doing some other cool celebrities and stuff. Tell us a little bit about the show. Yeah. So I started doing this show. This is literally before podcasts were around when we started to travel. And this is actually how I started to market my business is that, Facebook finally popped open right when we left. We're like, oh, wow, there's Facebook. I'm like, okay, how do I get in front of people so that not only we can grow more attention, but we can start growing our business again because we have no marketing dollars. So every day I would do a little video every single day and I put up on Facebook, just telling our journey, our story every single day. And so then I started hosting the show and it was, I would just do a Facebook live every single day. I called it the Freedom Paneur Show because we were now Freedom Paneurs, right? <laughs> You know, and I wanted to tell people's story. I wanted to hear how they got to where they are because I wanted to learn. So I've been doing this show for over 15 years now. And just three years ago, I said, okay, I want to get really serious because I love telling stories and the platform got a lot easier. And so we started filming really high production stuff. So my show now, it was the Help Me Rhonda show because I used to help them with their brand. And then it changed to the Rhonda Swan show where, yeah, I bring on entrepreneurs, uh, a lot of celebrities, public figures. I just had... Elena Cardone, Grant Cardone, Kevin Sorbo, Kevin Harrington, um, you know, like a really beautiful lineup of people. Patty Negri, who was from Ghost Adventures, was at the, the party. And um, Tito Ortiz, like UFC fighter. And 
I wanted to hear how they did it. It wasn't about like what you're doing because I'm of the belief and Diana Wentworth says this so beautifully. Um, when she's in the book from chicken soup for the soul. She says, it's not about what you've done. It's how you make people feel. That's how they remember you. Exactly. You no. Know? Exactly. Yeah. And I wanted to, I wanted to feel, I wanted to feel these people. Here's these public figures have done big stuff. And we're just so used to seeing the garbage about them. You know, the media sling mud at them or just their surface life. And so I just started interviewing and finding like, how did you get there? Like no one would have known that I was, unless they read our books, that I was raised to a drug addict father. And I went through all these struggles and they just see me as this powerhouse, but they don't know the stuff that I went through or how I got there, you know, and the insecurities that I had, all this, no one would believe that, but the world has it. And so I wanted to, and I still do every day, every time I interview someone, I just want to know why, how, how, you know, what did you do? How did you feel? What was the scariest point? How did you get there? And, um, you know, Kevin Sorbo, he was my favorite interview of all times. And I haven't interviewed you, Jimmy or Ron, that's definitely next. However, <laughs> oh, wait, that's a That's a trip. Well, that's going to no, be a good one. Kevin Sorbo is right so fabulous. No, but wait a minute. I have to ask you a question. Quiet, Jimmy, before I blacken your other eye. Now, listen, Swan, where did that come from? Well, my husband's last name is Swan. Okay. So it, that's how Yeah. You got so it. my last, my maiden name is Saunders. And I was like, Saunders. So your father was English, your mother was Italian. Yeah. Yeah. You look it, Italian. Yeah. You know, and Indian. My oh, great. No, you look Italian. Italian. You look like Claudia Cardinale a little bit, and she's Italian. And Italians, we, we're very beautiful people, you know, the Italian race. Well, I, I think I'm a Heinz 57. I think I just, like, I pull the most from the Italian and the American Indian. Those are the two I like the best. I probably have a laundry list of others behind <laughs> As we all do, the mutts that come No, over. but you, you have Italian skin. Yeah, Mediterranean. We, we have very, very yeah. good skin. Italian people, uh, we, we don't age. I'm 82 years old. We don't age quickly. We we have rubbery skin. It's good. You do a lot of facials. You do a lot of work oh, on I your live face. In Bali, like throw me ten dollars <laughs> facials, massages. You're kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He loves that. I, I, I'm moving to Bali. I, Listen, I, how much would a, a a cleaning person be? Okay, so I always share this to people because they really would never believe it. We have ten staff, and I don't say it to brag. I say no, no, no. I believe that. Right? We give so much life to so many families, but we have a full time chef. I have a full-time driver. I have six, uh, you know, staff that keeps our house up. And I think the total for all of them is $3,000 a month. Oh my God. <laughs> That's what it costs to get like one cleaning lady. <laughs> one cleaning <laughs> lady <laughs> in Palm Springs for a day. Twice a week or something, you know? Yeah. No, no I, I have a, a friend of mine in Costa Rica mm -hmm. and she lives way in the jungle. She flies to Florida to go to the beach because it takes it longer to get to the beach in Costa Rica by car than it does by aeroplane. Yeah. Is that fabulous? <laughs> so she has her own private plane and she flies into Fort Lauderdale to swim. Mm -hmm. Now she's got a, a home that's not to be believed in the middle of a jungle. And she's got a staff of God knows how many people. And she said like, well, they get $30 in American money a day. They're very happy. Yep. I said, yeah. wow, but Costa Rica is too humid. <laughs> It so is Bali. It's hot. But right now when we go back, it's going to be so beautiful because it's our winter. So we're opposite season. Right. There's no how, rain. How cold does it get? Cold is not the right word. 75, 80. Maybe. 75. Maybe. 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 Oh, so it's beautiful. It's like our, like, it's oh, like yeah, Hawaii. Beautiful. It's like Hawaii. It's the same climate as Hawaii. Yeah. So now I, what does your chef cook? She's what, what, amazing. What's, 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 Balinese, what's Balinese food? They eat nazi goreng and mee goreng, mainly rice dishes with like veggies or shrimp or chicken mixed together or noodles. That's kind of like the main uh, dishes. Nazi champur has like shrimp and different fish and all the mix of meat, but they're more very heavy on rice in right? Southeast Asia. So rice fields are everywhere. However, more so now they're being taken by Westerners home. So we're trying to preserve, you know, the culture. Because what happens is our, the land is so much you know, less expensive. So a Westerner comes in and offers $20,000 to an Indo person. And they're like, they'll pick it up. But what they realize, they just gave up their family's life of rice fields, of you know, food. And so we're helping educate big groups in Bali, helping educate the people. Don't just take the quick money. Learn how to cultivate your lands. And we're also trying to stop the Westerners from coming in and smashing down the land a lot. Now, are you afraid of sharks? You know, you when you're a surfer, so many. yeah, when you're a surfer, you just pretend like it 
You're not there. No, I never go in. I do not go in oceans. I go in swimming pools because I'm. I, 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 when I lived in Florida, I went to a friend's house and they lived on the ocean and there was a little bay in front of their house and there was a, um, a sword, not a swordfish, the other one, the other, like a shark. What was it called? Hammerhead or great, great white. <laughs> No, oh no, not that. It was a, I forgot what it was, like a tiger shark yeah. swimming in this little pond and they couldn't care less. And I said, aren't you afraid when you go in the water? You know, and then of course there were shark bites all along I the like coast horror, of Florida. I, I like horror movies and I watch every shark kill people movie, so I don't, but I'll still go in the ocean, but I won't go way out because no, I can't I surf. No, I try, but the sharks, but look, you got Long Island, look where, you, where Jaws was. It's changing. So, anyway, I want to go great back. White, I, I wanna, great white sharks are on Long Island. I want to go back real quick and just make a, give Rhonda a compliment because I think that you know, when we we obviously I've zoomed with you before. And so we've had chats, but I have never met you. But your personality is so like warm. You know, you're beautiful and all that stuff is is, you know, on the surface. But you're but what's underneath and what comes from inside from you, I think, uh, makes people gravitate towards you because you have such a warm personality. People automatically Jimmy, feel comfortable. Jimmy, there's one word for it. OK. And the word is positive. Mm. When you are totally, completely positive people love you we do not like negative people who negate we do not like people who doubt and worry we do not like people who are down and out and sorry and pitying and oh look at me poor me i didn't get a break we don't like that the victim role. <laughs> i don't like the victim role yes you're right i don't like that either yeah you know because that's the thing i and i appreciate that jimmy so much and i i really do i i i i hear that and i receive it because we could easily choose to be a victim. All of us could, you know, so many things have happened to us. We could be Not a- me, baby. Yeah, Never. I, I'm a tough I, guinea from Brooklyn. Yeah, was- exactly. That's what I was like. <laughs> you just did it because you're from Detroit. You're hardcore. I'm like, yeah, because I'm a survivor. But yeah, why right. would I rely on anyone else, you know? No, you're right. Because New York, Chicago people are alike. Yeah. And we're tough people. I mean, I grew up in Brooklyn with all Italian wise guys and tough people. And yeah. and I lived on Long Island, it, 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 Massapequa. I mean... Uh, forget about that. The, the, Jesus Christ, they want me to write a book. I said, I can't. I'll be killed tomorrow if I do. The n- names I could mention. But, you know, you grow up tough and you learn that in order to succeed in life, you have to, first of all, have something to offer. Mm, yeah. If you have nothing to offer, then find something to offer. Now, obviously, you found many things to offer. Uh, one is just being who you are. And you've worked on it over the years. You're relatively still young. And when you're my yeah, age, really, she's young. No, 49 is <laughs> 49 relatively is like, young. Ooh. I know. I, I feel like sometimes I'm like, wait, do I really have a 15 year old? And 49, that's like a silly number. I feel like I'm still like 15. You are you, know? ki- what is he? Are you <laughs> kidding? My daughter, my daughter is a blonde and now her hair is grown in gray and she has to tint her hair now to get rid of the well, gray. I'm not going to lie. No, I, I, have a, I, have, I have a 54 year old daughter. A 54-year-old daughter. That doesn't make and sense. I, like, that's almost no, my age. No, I said to her, Leslie, never tell people your age because I tell people I'm 50. So <laughs> right. how can I have a 54-year-old daughter? <laughs> and like I say, I like being 50 so much. I've been 50 for 40 years. <laughs> So right? let me tell everybody real quick. You guys can get the Women Gone Wild, the Wealth Edition, the Feminine Guide to Fearless Living. It's on Amazon right now, only for this week, for two dollars. So you yeah. can get it. The actual physical book will be coming out in September. Um, you can watch Rhonda's show, the Rhonda Swan Show. If you Google it, it comes up all over the place. Her agency is called the Unstoppable Branding Agency. And um, and if you want to follow her on Instagram, she's got like a million followers or something, maybe more. I'm not sure, but it's uh, her Instagram is just Rhonda oh, Swan. There you go. Oh, I do. So now, do you like Chinese food? I love it. Okay, we go to a wonderful restaurant in town that's been in LA forever. It's called Gungus Cohen. It's a Jewish uh, Chinese restaurant. You know it? Mm-hmm, well, course. we're gonna take we're gonna take you to dinner there when you come to town, so <laughs> okay. we could spend time with you. I want to know you. I want to know you privately. And I also I want to congratulate you and all the authors in the book on your billboard in Times Square and all the book signings and everything that you're doing. It's it's a it's a wonderful thing. We we both have read some of it, but we haven't finished it yet. Um, But we want to congratulate all the women, especially the ones that we met since we met them at the party. They were so fabulous. 
I have to give props. Karen Whelan, she has sent me a million messages. She sent me the billboard. She sends me anything. She's such a nice lady. We look forward. I told her we'll bring her on in July. Nice people and, uh, gravitate towards nice people and yeah. stay with nice people. Nice, bad people don't stick around long, if you notice. Absolutely. Right? So, right? You know what? Someone so, just sent here in the in the chat that they want to see pictures. So we had Getty Images there. Al was there, right, from yes. Getty. And almost, he's been uploading everything up on the Getty's website. So we're going to have some of the most beautiful photos. And then we also just got some photos back as well. I think, did I send you one? There's one I have the, the one of the ones. group one. Oh, no. So I didn't get those yet. But okay. I, I'm going to send those to you. They're, they're unbelievable. Like, I unbelievable. like, love it. I yeah. like, love it. So we want to wish you the best of luck with everything. Thank Good you. luck with it all. We love you. Nelica, and thank wait you. A minute. And when you're in Palm Springs, you're coming to our house. Absolutely. Okay, I'm definitely coming to your house in Palm Springs. Uh, and absolutely. I'm going to cook you a great Italian meal. <gasps> Whatever you like. Yes. You'll like, love it. All right, You'll you guys. So it. have all a great you. rest Thanks of your trip, everyone. and we'll see you soon. London, Bye, you're you guys. Ter you're terrific. Bye-bye. No. You're, 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 a, you're a gem, a total. She's a gem. She, she is. is. Sweetie what? pie. Listen, folks, no bullshit. I met her in person. And, you know, she's on camera now, so, of course, she's going to be super duper. But in person, she's, she's really the same. No, she's the same. She's super duper in person. So what you see is what you get. Rhonda's not full of crap. She's a real true girl who tells it like it is. And and I respect her. And I think it's wonderful what she's done with herself, coming from nothing to becoming something really great in the business world. So, you guys, what we're going to do, we're going to have our, our next guest is coming on. And before she comes on, I want everybody to get to hear a little bit of her music. And so we've got two different songs we're going to play. One of them is the one uh, is, is called Digital Paradise. And the other one is called Believe, because I like that one a lot. And uh, we're going to bring her on after we play it. I think we're going to play the Believe song first. And that way, when she's on, we'll play Digital Paradise. So, Juan, if you could get the Believe song ready, um, the name of the band. Her, okay, first of all, our guest name is Margarita Monet. And she's the lead singer for a really great band called Edge of Paradise. And this is their music video for the song Believe. And then we're going to bring her on. Enjoy.
All right, everybody. So that was Edge of Paradise. The name of the song was Believe. And now we're going to bring on the lead singer, the gorgeous and fabulous Margarita Monet. Bring her in. Hey! Hello. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my gosh. You are so fabulous. So let me introduce you, everybody. Starting off with this is my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. Yes. Hi. You know what I love most about your performance? What? Moves. You move like the movie stars of the 1940s when they sang. Aww. Most people sing standing up. You move, the arms, the everything about you is wonderful. You're not only a wonderful voice, but you're a wonderful show. You're oh, good, you. you're beautiful, and you know how to dance, and you're, you're terrific. I enjoyed your video a lot. Thank you so much. No, I don't lie either. I tell the truth. So also, <laughs> then we've got a chat room filled with people, and I think you have a lot of fans that are also in there. So just say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for joining. So everybody, this is Margarita Monet. You can follow her on Instagram. She's at Margarita dot period, whatever, Margarita period <laughs> Monet. And um, her band is Edge of Paradise. And the Instagram for Edge of Paradise is Edge of Paradise. So it's at Edge of Paradise. So tell us a little bit. So where are you from? Tell us a little bit about you. So we are based in Los Angeles. I, I live in Los Angeles, but originally I was born in Armenia. I lived in Moscow. Then we moved to Houston, Texas. And then I went to school in New York and somehow moved to Los Angeles. So, so how long have you now been in Los Angeles? Wait, your name is Margarita Monet. Margarita is Spanish and Monet is French. How's that happen? <laughs> well, actually, Margarita... It's a popular Armenian name as well. And in Russian, it's a name for the flower daisy. So it's pretty popular in that region of the world as well. Monet is my stage name. My actual name is Marunzian. Okay. <laughs> it's a bit long. We all have stage names too. I'm not yeah. really Jimmy Starr. He's not really Ron not Russell. Really Russell. So that one works perfect. And I want to say you have a very supportive fan base because I got all kinds of comments on Instagram and on Facebook and all over like it. People really, really like you and your band um, and everything. So how long has the band been together? Um, we've been together. So 10 years ago, me and the guitar player formed it. But really, as a whole, the band's been since 2018, I think that's when we really defined our sound. But, you know, prior years, Dave and I, we were, you know, figuring out what we wanted to sound like. But so that's, I started that's doing it. Mm -hmm. Dave Bates, right? I want to give yes. everybody, like, props. So I don't know if these – I took these people off of your website. Is that the right band so we can give props to everybody? I don't want to give props to anybody if they're not in the band. But <laughs> So, you guys, here's, here's who we've got in the band Edge of Paradise, which is an amazing band. Dave Bates, Jamie Marino. David Ruiz and Justin Blair. And uh, the name of the band is Edge of Paradise. And obviously, Margarita's the lead singer. How is it being like the only girl in a band? Um, just really quick, we have a new bassist, Kenny okay. Walkwood. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, Kenny, what's up, Kenny? <laughs> welcome, welcome. Oh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I've got to update that. So we. You know, it's I never really think of that because all the guys, they're everybody is great. We're all really good friends, and uh, we put the band first, so we all have a great relationship with each other. So I never really feel like I'm the only girl. <laughs> but um, you know, it's a funny question because when we started the band, I come from a classical music world, so it's very natural. For me to you know there's a lot of girls in classical music so i never really thought of myself as i'm the only girl or, you know how it is oh, like to be a female funny. singer uh, but now a lot of people ask me that because it's not as common so well, it's just it's like, yeah. like what genre do you consider your yourselves like are you can do you consider yourself i mean it's like rock but you consider yourself metal I, i'm not sure I, I don't know what the genre actually uh is exactly uh, mm -hmm. or, or like, how do you guys describe it? Like, what? Like, if I went to the, if I went to, well, I guess we don't have record stores anymore. But mm -hmm. if I went to a record store, what bin would I find you in? Would you be in a metal bin, a rock bin? Where would I find you? Well, in Europe, we are in the rock bin. Okay. <laughs> in some record stores over there, but um, in general, we we call ourselves cinematic rock. Um, okay. I don't really consider us metal 
just because the music is melodic and I don't really do screaming. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> right. it's I don't think it's I don't yeah. think it's metal either. Jimmy, Jimmy said to me earlier you were metal, and then when I heard you, I said she's not metal. She has a voice. You know, yeah, I don't she think sings. it really fits under. <laughs> I don't think sings. it really fits Listen, under metal who, either. Your costume was beautiful. Who did it? Thank you. Oh well, I got a dress and I cut it up and cost customized it. So. so you you did that. I customized a lot of stuff. Yeah. I loved I love the way you did the wrap around one leg and then the slit and then the gown oh, yeah. on the other. I was very clever. I, you were very impressive, and I as I said before, I liked all your moves, your gown, your look, your voice. You have a good show. Uh, do you book it a lot? Um. Yeah. So we are we're going on tour. In, in August, and we are, we're going to be touring a lot, and we're really, right now, we're building up our stage show even more to support the latest album, The Unknown. So, because, you know, the pandemic sort of put a stop on the live show for a few years, yes. because we were really ready to go out and bring the theatrical, um, more of a production, because that we want the live show to be an experience, not just the music. So now yeah, we're you have, picking you it back up. You have all the ingredients of becoming a superstar. Oh, thank you. No, seriously, I so you too. have all the ingredients that you know. Your look, your voice, the show. Your you you have. You're professional. I think that you're going to go someplace very big soon. I thank actually you. I actually wrote some notes down. So first of all, so how many albums has Edge of Paradise recorded? Um, we recently released our fourth one, so it's four total, but. Really, I think two, just because okay. that really showcases what Edge of Paradise is. When we released Universe in 2019, that really defined our sound. So that's kind of what the band is. Prior albums, um, they're cool. Like actually, Immortal Waltz, we recorded with Michael Wagner, who did Metallica and Ozzy Osbourne, and it was one of the most inspirational experiences for me. But you know, it was still at the stage where we were trying to figure out. Uh, what we wanted to sound like. I also read though that Tony Franklin played mm -hmm. was the bassist on your feature on your debut album, and Tony Franklin's a good friend of ours. He's been on the show many times. Oh, and, very uh, cool. And we love Tony Franklin. And I actually saw when you were at Nam a picture. Either mm -hmm. you posted or Tony posted it once. Yeah. You have the two of you guys together at Nam, and I thought, mm -hmm. oh my god, that's so cool because we love Tony. Um, he yeah. sometimes plays with Scott Page. Um, he, he's and, a he's a sweet and, guy. Yeah, we just love him to death. He's and yeah. he's been on the show. So there's somebody in in the chat room named Nick G, and I know he came for you. So say hi to Nick. Oh, hello, Nick. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, how do thank you, you so now? Much. Do you have romance with your tight schedule? So tell me a little bit about <laughs> your. Do you have a special guy who you're sweet oh, on? Is he in the band? <laughs> Do you have somebody you're sweet on? We need a little gossip here, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I do. He's very supportive. He's also an artist. He's not in the band, um, okay. but a, yeah. A, a, paint, a painter artist? Um, no. He oh, does recording. a lot of he he does a lot of digital art and he does electronic music. So. Which you do art too, you guys. If you go right, to I was gonna Edge go, of Paradise yeah. Band .com, you can actually see uh, Margarita's Some of art. your work. Yeah. Uh, on there yeah well you know i'm excited today because i put together a book of lyrics and art for the unknown and it just came in this morning and i got oh. it right here oh, <laughs> show yeah. it show it show oh, it to God. us congratulations no, no, cl close it and bring it closer yeah close, close it. the book bring okay, it okay so the unknown Atta, is the name girl. so the unknown is the name of your album edge of yeah. paradise is the band Look and this is beautiful. artwork and this is artwork that you created, right? Yeah, so it's all the lyrics. And so throughout, uh, since the album's been released, I've been painting. Um, so all these artworks, people own it around the world because as I paint them, you know, people buy them. So they're somewhere all over the world, but I wanted to put them together in a book with the lyrics. Congratulations. How, how, much, how much does that book sell for? <laughs> $50. Fifteen? Awesome. Fifty. 50. Mm -hmm. Oh, fifty. And where do people get it? Um, it's gonna go up live on our Edge of Paradise store, which is edgeofparadisestore.com. Okay, you guys. So edge to of make Paradise a good, a good coffee com. table book, folks. Yeah. So I have a question for you, okay? Because you know, I knew a few. Like I, I, I'm not really I haven't talked to her in a long time, but I used to be really good friends with Lita Ford. You know, there's there's some iconic women. Um, who are some of the iconic? And we just had Susie Quattro on our show a couple of weeks ago. 
Um, who are some of the iconic women that maybe you looked up to growing up to be like, oh my gosh, I could do this and I could be a, a female rock star? <laughs> well, you know, when I was little, it didn't even cross my mind. Oh, I didn't think I could <laughs> ever do. Oh, because you were going to be a classical artist. What were you going to be? An icon like opera singer? No, I played piano my whole life, and then oh. I did ballet, <laughs> and I did theater. Oh my gosh! So I did all so of that. Do, do, do you know who Stevie Nicks is? Yes, of course. I I know <laughs> now, and, and but you know what? So well, my, she was she was the only girl in an all male band. Hmm. Yeah, but so my my dad was really into Led Zeppelin, and my mom was really into Queen, and I found VHS tapes of the live performances, and I would secretly watch them and secretly oh, wanted to. That, <laughs> that is so cool. Well, yeah. so who are some of who are some of the uh, female you know rock star people that you like admire or like or listen to? Madonna. What'd you think of Madonna? <laughs> I like, I mean, I, I appreciate all music and I love, yeah, like she's such a great performer. Um, I, you know, Joan Jett, I'm Blondie, but. Oh, Blondie's um, a good one. Joan Jett's always, a good one. I, I love like the Scorpions. Um, oh, wow. I love Ronnie James Dio. I don't know. I was always really drawn to male vocalists for some reason. What, what did That's you think funny. of the Beatles? Yeah. Um, do you know who the Beatles are? Yeah, she yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm not a, I, like I'm well, not a big so I'm not a big fan of the Beatles. So for me, like I mean, I understand their impact in the world, but it's not like kind of music that I would sit around and listen to. Um, well, it doesn't know. have the scope that yours does. I mean, you 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 are a show. The Beatles were never a show; they were just a band that you played. But you are definitely a show to watch extremely uh, uh artistic and dramatic i loved i loved your video we're gonna play another video this is the one she wanted and now keep to play, up so. keep up that beautiful arm work and those raising the arms and the fingers and it's so <laughs> and the drama no you know most people when they sing they don't act they just sing and it's flat i love an actor a, a singer who acts and mm -hmm. you you act as you sing and that shows me real talent because you feel the song they're actually talking about it in the chat room, and I was going to bring it up anyway, but I, I don't know where I saw if I it was either on your Instagram or it was on your website, but you actually did a cover uh, of Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses. So what made you guys decide to do that song? So a little bit. <laughs> actually, the video for Believe was filmed by Nigel, who filmed the original video for Welcome to the Jungle. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but um, you know, Welcome to the Jungle was the song that Dave and I met over because when I started doing this with this producer, we needed something. We walked into the store and Dave was like soloing over Welcome to the Jungle. <laughs> oh my God, that's cute. That's so cute. What yeah. a great song, though. It's such an iconic like rock song. And so mm -hmm. were you a fan of Guns N' Roses? Yeah, I always, it's actually probably the first song I tried to sing as a singer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so oh yeah, yeah you said you song. you said you played piano and you did mm -hmm. ballet and stuff so you weren't even singing back then so like how did no. you decide like oh my god i'm gonna be a singer now like that's not an easy thing to do you know in high school i went to a performing arts high school and i kicked, got kicked out of musical theater <laughs> oh did you, did you go to performing arts school uh, in, mm -hmm. in in new york no in houston texas and then i went to nyu for theater and I oh, took some astronomy classes and some music classes, but oh, so you're yeah. smart too, because NYU and, is hard to get and into. I, <laughs> and I, I, I've I've been told by musicians that your voice is another instrument. So if you learn how to use your voice, like you do the piano or the trumpet, you'll be able to sing. So that's mm -hmm. why so many uh, musicians can sing because their voice is another instrument, and yours yeah. is certainly a beautiful <laughs> instrument. Okay, so so we're gonna play we're gonna play digital yeah, I wanna, paradise. I want to see your next. Tell video. us tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about the song digital paradise. Is it on the new album, the unknown? Yes. So digital paradise was the first single, and uh, the unknown has this futuristic element to it, where we explore what it might be like if humanity and artificial intelligence merge, and maybe we find afterlife through living in this digital space. So that that song kind of touches upon that. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy it. So it'll be fun. All right, everybody, check it out. This is Edge of Paradise, Digital Paradise, and uh, this is Margarita Monet. Enjoy.
Margarita. Hey, Margarita. So, so somewhere in the middle of that song, YouTube flagged the, the video. So, like, I don't know if everybody saw the whole thing, but we're still on audio, so we have to keep going. You know, that really anno that it annoys me because it's your song. You're here, and you gave us permission to play it, and yet they have the audacity to pull it down and shut us down. I, I get it all over. the time on uh -huh. our own Facebook page. They always flag us. Yeah, I think it's horrible. Now we have a do. Oh, Jesus. Now th there we are. You're back. I'm going to talk to you for a while. Okay. Again, let me see your hands. Hold your hands up like that. <laughs> you have the most incredibly beautiful hands and fingers. <sighs> You have such long fingers, and when you perform and you do all of that stuff, Astro, behave. Little dog that we have, seven pounds, is a big mouth. Come on, Astro, stop it. Um, I love your videos, I, and I'm 82 years old, and I shouldn't really Happy like Happy birthday, them. by the way. Oh, thank you so heard. much. But I shouldn't really like your video because old people are not supposed to like the new oh, stuff. No. You a know, lot of it, a lot of it, I don't like, but I love your, your. I love the first one better than this. the second one was good, but the first one's my favorite. I love that song also. The, the first song is my favorite song. What was the name of that song? Believe. 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 I love that. That song is gonna fly like there's no tomorrow. I like the way though that you guys, your your videos are like movie. I mean, it's really like a movie. It's not like just a, a no. A you know, video. it reminds me of many years ago. Like in the 1980s, they had a, a network on TV. Remember MTV or something? We used to watch just videos of, mm -hmm. of people performing. And Do you remember MTV like when it was all videos? <laughs> Probably not. You're not. No, old you're too young. It was just videos. But it was well, a tough. I, I lived in Moscow and there they had a lot of channels where they just play music. And I used to watch a lot of European music some american music so yeah. no but this was everybody famous as video and it was so interesting and then if suddenly mtv went away but i also read your video I, is like an mtv video yeah, it's, it's i totally love it i really do love it honest I, and truly i read a, i read on your website which everybody the website again is edgeofparadiseband.com um that you guys have toured the u.s europe and japan like how was it going on tour first of all did you have a good time and like how is it like traveling with a bunch of guys I, I love touring. It's one of my old favorite things to do. Playing live is like nothing else. Um, we did in 2019, we got to go to Japan, which was like another world and they love music over there. And I loved Japan because it's so futuristic, but it's so, the culture is incredible and people really appreciate the music. And then we got to do a European tour, which was almost 30 countries with a band, Sonata Arctica. And uh, that was a blast. Every country, um, you know, the audience is different. So you right. get to experience that as well. I, I love it. I mean, I was actually the only, we were the only female fronted band. <laughs> but you know, I don't think of us as female fronted. We're, we're just a band and everybody is always really cool. So I always have a great time. And our merch girl was a girl. So there was, and the tour manager was a girl. So I never really thought like, I'm, you know, I, I fit in, <laughs> I can hang yeah, with now, you. What, 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 what made you want to live in Russia? Most people in Russia want to get out of Russia. Why did you want to go into Russia? Now, we have friends here that lived in Russia, and they don't have very nice things to say about it. Well, I didn't have much choice. I was three when my family moved. Uh, oh, you know. <laughs> there you go. There you go. But, you know, I, we lived in Ar I was born in Armenia, and it was when Soviet Union fell apart. So my dad moved the family there, and it was much better life. And I had a lot of opportunity there, and, you know, all the ballet, all the music, all the ballet stuff. for sure. Like, How tall was, are you? How tall are you? I'm f around 5'8". Okay. Oh, you're nice. That's why you look good on stage. <laughs> you know, your showgirl height. That's what the, All showgirls are anywhere from 5'10 to 6 feet or better. So oh. You're 5'8 five, five, with those big shoes on. You're 6 foot. Yeah, almost, I was right? too tall for ballet. <laughs> Well, back then, not anymore. Now, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm broad. If you go to New York City, the ballet, you see some of the ballerinas are very tall. Yeah. They're, they're not tiny. Like years ago, you had to be five mm -hmm. foot one or five foot two, because otherwise yeah. the men couldn't lift you. Yeah. Now you have these big women. These guys are big with muscles, and so it all works yeah. out. Nice. Do, you miss, do you miss dancing? I do, but, you know, I really love 
the band because I get to do a lot of the stuff that I learned through the years. So like on stage, you know, I get to move, then I get to create music videos, which was, you know, my love for theater kind of comes through. Well, there, there's your ballet training. It's in your performance with your movements. I see it. You're graceful. Yeah. I, 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 I don't want to sound like a retarded old man, but I <laughs> loved, I really loved watching Believe. I like the song very much, and the, I just love the video. Do you have toe shoes? Did you have toe shoes when you were yeah. little? Yeah. That was like my thing. My sister took. I'm gay. When I was yeah. little, my sister took ballet, and all I ever. wanted to do, all I wanted to do, was wear her toe shoes. I swear to God, like, like I thought that was the. I would always go and try and put them on, and my parents would have a heart attack that I was trying to put on her pink <laughs> toe shoes. I I threaten him all the time. I'm going to buy you a pair of pink toe shoes. <laughs> And you could put a pirouette around the house. So I also know, so um, uh, the person who helped introduce us to you is a good friend of mine, and he's your, your manager, Jeff Buttermark. So we want to, like, say hi to Jeff. So on three, everybody say hi, Jeff. He's the coolest guy on the planet. One, two, three. Hi, hi Jeff! Jeff. <laughs> Jeff Buttermark, everybody. He's, like, a superstar, and he's a really great guy. Well, he and, sent uh, us a superstar. And he She's sent a us a superstar. Guy. How old are you? You're, like, 21, too? No, she's not gonna. She's not gonna tell you. You're older than that. No, I'm. I'm. I'm thirty. Over thirty. Are you over thirty? You look great. Yeah, you, you look, actually. You do look look I good. thought you were twenty-one, twenty-two years old. I, I feel. Like, I feel like I'm sixteen. So me, me too. No, you and you're kind of. You're kind of giddy and fun like that. So when you're going on tour in August, who are you going uh, by yourself? Are you guys going with somebody else or or? Uh... Yeah, we're we're going out with a band called Temperance. They're out of Italy. And then we also have a band out of Italy called Carved, they're opening. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's actually, this tour is the first tour that's all girls, all female fronted bands. So that's gonna be fun. We've never done anything like that, but it's um, put together by uh, International Women of Rock. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay, so let's do a little hypothetical. So, so Edge of Paradise gets a phone call, or Jeff gets a phone call, and it's from whatever band you think would be the coolest band to play with. Who would you pick? Who would you want Jeff to tell you the phone call is from? There's a lot. I mean, Ramstein would be awesome. Oh, Ramstein. Okay, that's a good one. Okay, give me three. Who's two more that you like? Um, I love Within Temptation. I love uh, Nine Inch Nails would be awesome. I mean, there's oh, so Nine many. Inch Nails. Nine Inch Nails mm -hmm. would be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but I love the fire in Ramstein, and then he has those angel wings. Yeah, we got to really. Because you're about the show, stuff. though. You really like the show, yes, you know, I like do. you're because you're. You, a... you notice how silent I am. I have no idea. <laughs> you know who Nine Inch Nails is? <laughs> Nine Inch Nails. I've met them. Uh, no, I have. You haven't. I. I you weren't with me when I met them. I mean, them. these names are weird for me. <laughs> Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> you have. Uh, oh, Jeff Buttermark just joined us in the chat room. There's a guy hey, named Jeff. There's a guy yes. in there named Jonathan. A guy in there named uh, Colin who says Within Temptation would be amazing. And there's mm -hmm. another guy, Sergey. Do you know Sergey? Say hi to Sergey. Yeah, because oh, he's Sergei. like he's just talking about how great the band is with all their fans, and that's that, what that's, that's what will make you. That's a real Russian name. Sergey is such a Russian name. Oh, I know. I like love it. I, I think it wasn't fantastic. that Sergey was the guy who managed the famous ballet dancer who did the fawn. Uh, what was his name? The famous turn of the century ballet dancer. He danced the fawn. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> that one I can't. Oh, know. my God. He's <laughs> world we're internationally famous. One word. But Sergey was his manager. Sergey's last name is Sucharukov. And he's the one who told us about the Guns N' Roses. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, uh, anybody he's, know who he's awesome. I'm... He's very supportive. He's actually out of Russia. So oh, very cool. Actually, over there. Is he still in Russia? Mm -hmm. Oh, We have a lot of people who listen to this show in Russia, actually, because I get my stats right. of where people listen, and there's, mm -hmm. like, there's like thousands and thousands of people who actually watch our show in Russia. They, they don't know how we get away with it in this country. <laughs> and I say because we're a free country. We have freedom of speech. <laughs> and we say what we want and do what we want. But let's get back to that dancer. He's famous. They made a movie about him, and he danced the ballet, the fawn. Uh, tis, is it is he Tiskarinsa? I don't know. No, uh, he's he was. A, now he I was, have to look it up. He was the turn right. of the century, like nineteen five or eighteen eighty nine, nineteen. Very famous. My one word is name. First of all, she wasn't. A no, I wasn't either, Jimmy, but I know of him. He was a world-famous international Russian dancer. Nijinsky. 
Oh, Nijinsky. Oh, yeah, Nijinsky. He's right, Vasilov Nijinsky. And his partner was 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 Sergey, who was gay. And, and the they, music was done by Claude Debussy. Yeah, Debussy's mm. the fawn. It was a. I love that. Did ballet. you? Were you in a bunch of ballets when you were younger? Then did you do a bunch um, of ballets? I I did. I mean, I was still younger. We actually went to Prague and performed all over Prague with the company I was in. Oh really my gosh. Fun. So you've really been around the world and been all over. People that live in Europe really have a far better worldly experience, education, and people who live in this town. Well, everything's in LA. much closer. <laughs> yeah, it's no, much true. Everything is a lot closer. So, people who live in LA just think LA. They don't think out of the box. Well, when you live in Europe, you, you are international. Of course, B. Claudia knew who it was. Say hi to B. Claudia. She's in Germany. She, she knew it was Nijinsky, right? So, yeah, she knows sure. everything. B. Claudia well, is like smart. an encyclopedia. She so how did smart. you decide to come to, like, so you got kicked out of, you got kicked out of school. And out of, <laughs> out of, you got kicked out of fame. You were at fame. <laughs> and then you got kicked out. And how did you get, how did you actually get to go to L.A.? Like, what, how, what led to you going to L.A.? I'm I'm very stubborn, stubborn and driven. And I told my parents I want to go to New York, so I went to school. My dad is a scientist, actually, so I get a lot of him. Um, yes. <laughs> it's a, a lot of the music I kind of go into those um, themes. But yeah, I went to New York to study theater, astronomy, um, music. Then uh, I, I don't know still to this day what made me move to Los Angeles because I love New York. I love living there, but something made me move. That's how I believe things happen for a reason. So one day I got up and I went to LA <laughs> and I've been here ever since. Yeah, but Los, we live here in Palm Springs. We go to Los Angeles all the time. Mm -hmm. It's nothing like New York. Yeah. Oh, Ron likes New York. I'm a New Yorker. Here. I was born and raised there. It's the, it's the best city in the world. Mm -hmm. Anything you want, it's there. Everybody yeah. you'd want to look at is there. It's it's really the uh, the melting pot of the world. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I, I love, love and, and it's so chic, and it still has elegance, and it still has sophistication, mm -hmm. and opera, and ballet, and all the wonderful things that we're losing every day. Mm -hmm. You know, culture is not a, a main thought anymore. So wait a second. So you moved to LA and then how did you actually how did you come about meeting Dave? I mean I know you said you met him like at a guns and something with guns and roses, <laughs> but like like how long wait, have you been here before Dave you met him? So I uh, been in LA for a few months and I was doing everything just to survive here. I was actually in a dance group and uh, there was a producer and he wanted to make a song and he knew I played piano. So I made a song with him and it turned out to be a rock song and he made me sing on it. So it was the first time I tried singing. And then we, he wanted to get a guitar player to play on it, but we weren't even looking for one yet. And then all of a sudden we needed something. We went into the music store and there's Dave playing. Oh. <laughs> so, and then he offered him like 50 bucks or something. And I think Dave saw me and was like, you know. Maybe it was get to know her. Yeah, she's meant to get to know her because she's beautiful. And how did you meet your boyfriend? Um, in a coffee shop. Oh, wow. There you go. He picked you up in a coffee shop. Did you pick him up or did he pick you up? He saw her. He picked her up. She's so beautiful. Uh, yeah. Um, I was working on a music video and he was like, What are you working on? <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Yeah. yeah so look at how she gets when she talks yeah, about him. He, you are him. so in love. It's so adorable. Uh, <laughs> look at you. You talk about him and you're like smile. a schoolgirl. You're like a 14 year old schoolgirl. That's because no one ever asks me these questions. That's because we're not a normal that's show. We, that, that, that's why we're the number one show in the world. Yeah, we're not normal. No, you know, this, you know I, I ask the questions that my audience wants to know. You know, they want to know all this stuff. They see a pretty girl. They want to know, is she straight, gay, married, you know, whatever. And you have a boyfriend. You want to get married or not? Marriage is not in your plans, right? I mean, I don't know. One one day, maybe. Yeah, because right now you're, you're skyrocketing. Marriage would not be a good idea. <laughs> well, I'm giving you fatherly advice. I mean, you, you know, when you have achieved what you want mm -hmm. and marriage then becomes important to you, then you marry. But to include it now in a dream, not such a good idea. No, that's true. Yeah, I'm no. very 
I, I really love you're it. Focused. You're focused. Yeah, well, you're focused on your. You can tell that you're very focused. Very focused on your career. You're doing a brilliant job. Take it from me. If I didn't like it, I'd sit here with my mouth shut. I don't give fake. <laughs> I don't give fake compliments. No, you're very. I like what you do. I'm serious. I'm very impressed by you, and I'm not so impressed do, by many. Do you do all your own costumes then, for the most part? Um, I do a lot. I like. I do. I design a lot of uh, props. Like before music videos, I'm there on the floor making stuff. No, because but... you're very artistic. I mean, your book, the book is beautiful and mm -hmm. uh, and everything about it. So I think it's fabulous to be so artistic. So so you're going to go on tour then uh, in support of the unknown. Is that mm -hmm. basically you're going to be going in the book? So you take the books with you so you can <laughs> sell them to people. You will, you be, will you be playing in L.A.? Um, we probably will play in L.A. before we go. Not sure. Right now we don't have anything booked, but definitely in the fall. We'll, we'll have a show in L.A. and we would love to invite you both. Thank you. Absolutely. And so, and we will let everybody know when it is so we can go all as a gang and see it. Absolutely. It would be a lot of fun. So where are you going on tour? We have like two. I think what do we have? We have th two, three minutes left. Where, well, are, you, just, where wait, are you going wait, I want to say something oh. to B. B, do you live in Munich? Because when Jimmy and I fly to Genoa, we stop in Munich for a couple of hours. Well, actually, she says she Munich. is touring next to me. Yeah, B's in Germany. So you're going to Germany? Uh, well, we're, we're going to the UK, Netherlands, and Belgium. And we'll, we'll definitely be back to Europe. We're going to hit Germany, Italy. I love Belgium. Okay. I had a blast when yeah. I was in Belgium. Um, I think it's fabulous. So, so. But does B, do you live anywhere near Munich? Um, she says she didn't answer that one yet. Anyway, because we, we to... fly from Palm Springs to Munich, then to Genoa, mm -hmm. Italy. Anyway, cool. let's go back. So, you guys, this is Margarita Monet. You can follow her on Who Instagram. Who is a terrific talent. She's at margarita.monet. The name of the band is Edge of Paradise. The website is edgeofparadiseband.com. If you go to edgeofparadisestore.com, what is it? Yes, or Edge, yes, Edge of Par right. You can get her brand new book that we got to see. We're the first ones to see it, you guys. Yeah. It was like breaking news on the Jimmy Star <laughs> Show with Ron Russell. She also has art on the website. Uh, please support them. Their new, uh, their latest album is The Unknown, and they're going to be on tour. So if you're in Belgium, the UK, and where else did you say you're going? Uh, Netherlands. And the, or the Netherlands, make sure you go see them. Probably you're very popular in Europe, right? Cause yeah, we sure do have a lot of fans in Europe, mm -hmm, so we're excited to be back there. I think it's fabulous. And I want to say, always treat the fans well. Everybody, all the comments yes. in the chat room are how nice you guys are to your fans because that's what will build you oh, she's and a make lovely. you a superstar. Well, they're, they're, they're our world, you know? So she, we is, love her she is a lady. She's an elegant lady, young lady. She's not a drugged up moron that doesn't have his smooth. <laughs> like years ago, everybody was low, like that Rose, what was her name? Janice Joplin. I never got it. <laughs> it is I like mean, Janis Joplin. I thought she was the most obnoxious dope addict that used to scream at the audiences and how they loved and adored her. I'll never know. I had never gotten over that. So I you mean, guys, really. so you guys actually, uh, uh, we, they want to know the meaning of the false idol song, but I don't know if you can you explain that in like 30 seconds. She did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, the did False Idols is about, it's questioning why do we follow certain people throughout history? Exactly. Oh, okay, got it. There you go. So that was for... Um... So true, my darling. I can't get into it because I'll get cut off the air. But <laughs> don't don't follow what we so have now. So you guys, now. check out check out their cover <laughs> of Welcome to the Jungle. Check out their all their music videos. Um, they're fabulous. We want to thank you for coming on the show. We want to thank Jeff Buttermark and Eileen Shapiro who helped set it all up. Yep. We, we wish you the thank best you. of luck in all you do and congratulations on all your success and upcoming thank success. And, and, when you're you super, so and when you're super duper famous and I run into you, don't you dare ignore me. Oh, no. <laughs> I would give me the biggest hug. Thank you. Thank oh, you. That's sweet. Thank you, Margarita. So bye bye. Sweet. Bye, my darling. Uh, so all right, sweet. everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. God We're out of time you. this thank week, you. Juan. Thank you. And uh, we had great guests, you guys, yes. Rhonda Swan and Margarita Monet. Um, thanks everybody in the chat room for participating. We'll see you guys next week. Bye, everybody. Bye, -bye everybody. Woo! <laughs> so I can try not to be so wrong. In the mix, 
Yeah, we in the mix. It's another episode. Here we go. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Interviewing the hottest news that you will send to the celebrities. Make sure to subscribe so you can get notified weekly. Jimmy Star, he's the king of cool. Ron Russell, he's a gorgeous dude. Chat room is live and you would be a fool not to vibe with us at the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Come watch it live on W4CY Radio. Miss some past episodes? Download on iTunes. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. It's the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Russell.